into our feet as we join in our first hymn this morning. It's a good old hymn. You probably haven't sung it in a long time. Let's sing about that Pentecostal power.
call to worship centers itself on Pentecost. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Good. Let's join in our next hymn this morning. Praise Him, praise Him. Egypt, in the parts of Libya near Cyrene, 
visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me in the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he was received from the Father, the Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we're heading to prayer at this time. A few names uh, that we want to make mention of. Uh, Sharon, maybe.
recently mentioned of a friend this morning that she wants us to remember in prayer the name, name slips me, and uh, I'm sure it's on my phone back there somewhere. Dave Hagel. Thank you. Oh. Nice to message you too there. <laughs> uh, Bob Taylor uh, is in hospice at the moment. Mary Franks uh, with her uh, long repair is going to take on the tendon in her leg. Uh, Thelma Crater, uh, Blaine Everhart, Jackson Manis, Michelle Crane, and Donna Kavey. Anybody you'd like to make mention of this morning? Tom, go ahead there. Pastor Bob Taylor passed away. Oh, he did. Okay. I just had the name on the list there. Right. Pray for his family. Yes. John, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to uh, pray for Janice Callan and uh, uh, daughter in law, Sarah. Uh, they're both dealing with uh, intense infection in the American control. Also remember Carla, remember too. For her, she came through her surgery fine, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, saw pictures this morning of her leg there and all, so she's, she's on the mend. Pray for Carla today. I see a hand over there in that area. Nobody else?
bring into your world, dear Lord, bring into this place and the people gathered around this world, lifting their hearts to you and looking to you for hope and for help. Pray for those areas that are still being affected heavily by the virus, those in New Jersey, another county out in California, down in Texas, there are places where the virus seems to be running rampant and we pray that you can bring healing and calm and peace to those areas. I pray to your Lord that you'll be with Mary Franks today. Be with Thelma Crater. Be with Blaine, dear Lord. Be with Jackson. Be with Michelle Crane this time. Be with Donna Cavey. Be with the family of Bob Taylor. Be with Janice Callan in this time. Be with your church gathered here in Thornville, Ohio, dear Lord, be with your people in this place. Come together as those who want to follow you and walk with you. We remember your first disciples, how they came to you, and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So we come together, still wanting to learn how to pray, still trying to get this right. Some of us have been at it for a long time now. All of us come together today as we lift our voices to you in prayer. And we remember our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Look around the room, see somebody you know, wave at somebody, say God loves you. say a word about the offering here if you're coming back to the sanctuary to worship with us uh, we've made a few changes uh, one of those changes is that we're not passing the offering plate that way we're not all touching the same plates and uh, spreading those germs around and things so our offering plates are located at the back of the sanctuary on either side when you come in uh, just drop your offering in one of the plates uh, when you come in on Sunday morning and if you want to mail it into the church still, you can do that. It's P.O. Box 253, Thornville, Ohio, 43076 at the Thornville United Methodist Church. Thank you all for your faithfulness in this time. Thank you all for uh, putting God first in your lives. And uh, we thank you for all that you do around here. From here, we're going to move into the message today. And we are in Philippians chapter 2 for our scripture. Of course, it's Pentecost Sunday, and we've just read Acts chapter 2. Let's we'll see if we can somehow pull all of it together today as uh, Paul writes to the Philippians here about imitating Christ's humility. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same voice, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made 
himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. There's so much to say, and yet I have no idea what to say to you today. Just uh, last night, uh, uh, one of my professors and colleagues in the ministry, Alan Revere, up in the Akron area, uh, made a post out there about it being Pentecost this weekend, and, and I commented we, we all know everything that has gone on in the past week in Minnesota and around our country and everything we've been dealing with for the last few months here with the virus and everything. And uh, I commented on his post and I said, I, I really have no idea what to say tomorrow. And he said, maybe that's what you should leave with then. I said, yeah, I was thinking that too. What do I say on a day like today? We see rioting and violence going on in our news. Uh, we uh, have all been fed up uh, with all of this for the last few months, being told what to do and not agreeing with all of it. Uh, everybody's nerves and feelings are on edge. <laughs> what do we do? How much longer is this going to go on? much more are we going to have to deal with? We come back to this moment looking at Christ and what Christ went through. Um, looking at what Christ had to deal with on behalf of all of mankind. Uh, we come back to here. This is the central focus of Christianity. Christ comes into this world. He comes with a message of salvation. He comes with a message of hope. And it is not received well by all. And there are those who take his life, and yet he does not lash out at them in return. Uh, the scripture that we're reading here from Philippians 2, Paul makes the central point here that Christ had all the power, that he is in very nature God. He is the Son of God. He has all the power. He is at the right hand of the Father, yet he does not take any of that power as an advantage to take control of everybody else. He does not come to beat everyone else over the head and say, you will do this or else. He comes with the nature of a servant. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard when we live in a world in situations where people are telling us what to do and we don't like it and we don't agree with it. It's hard to be a servant in return. It's hard to approach situations like this with humility. It's hard to say, okay, I don't agree with all of this, but I will go ahead and do it anyway. Christ didn't want to die either. Yet he puts his life out there. Paul say here in our passage today if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, any common sharing in the spirit, any tenderness, compassion and make my joy complete by being like minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Some of you are wearing them today, some of you are not. And you know what? That's purely up to choice. The idea behind wearing one of these is that we keep our germs off of everyone else. Humility, value 
others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. It's one thing to believe that Christ exists, it's another thing altogether to give our hearts and souls over to him and let him call the shots in our hearts and lives. In Wesleyan thought, there are two distinct moments in our salvation journey. There is a moment of salvation when we ask for forgiveness and we ask for God to come into our hearts and lives. We ask Christ to live here. And then there is also a moment where we come to this place where we turn the authorship, the authority over to God and say, you call the shots. It's no longer me. You lead the way. For all of the disciples, they came to know Jesus three and a half years before this moment when the Holy Spirit falls. They have salvation. They know who Christ is. They've been walking with him for these last three years. And here comes another moment, another grand moment when the Holy Spirit falls. And it is during this time of leading up to the Holy Spirit that they come to this place or they turn everything over to him and say, you lead the way, you call the shots. Jesus wouldn't talk to them, John 14, 15, 16, that long walk to the Garden of Gethsemane. He tells them all of this. The Holy Spirit will come. It will fall. The Holy Spirit will bring conviction. It will speak. You will be the vessels that it speaks through. All of us need to come to a moment where we stop and we ask for salvation, we ask Christ to come in, and we all need to come to a place where we turn the authority of our lives over to God and let God call the shots. Christ, who is the Son of God, who has all the power and all the authority, does the same thing comes to the river in front of John the Baptist and he bows and John says, I'm not worthy to do this. And Christ says, do it anyway. I'm here to be baptized just like everybody else is. <clears throat> Christ, who has all the power and all the authority, submits himself to the Father over and over again throughout the Gospels. He says, I'm not here to speak of my own accord. I'm here to do whatever the Father wants me to do. I'm here to say whatever the Father wants me to say. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. We're willing to give our lives what is right or are we pounding our fist saying everybody else should be doing what I think they should be doing are we willing to step back from and say okay it's not about me I'm not here to call the shots I'm not here to tell anybody else what to do I'm here to serve because of this Paul says here in verse 9, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here's where I would struggle with our Pentecostal brother's explanation of what Pentecost is all about. Because our Pentecostal brothers would tend to get a little carried away. It's a wild moment. These 12 guys step out onto a balcony and start speaking in tongues. It's a wild moment. It 
was like a riot in their minds. It's crazy. Fire falls from heaven. These 12 guys speak in tongues. This crowd of people out here, 3,000 strong. Woo! Is that really what happens in that moment? These 12 guys come out and speak. And 3,000 people hear the message that day. And it's all in their own native tongue. Even though these 12 guys are Galileans, somehow every one of them out there is hearing Asian and Roman and Greek and Parthians. Every dialect from every part of the world, every background, every tongue is hearing their own language in their heads, in their ears. But these 12 guys are Galileans. How in the world is this happening? In this moment. And Peter steps up and brings clarity to the moment. Out of what looks like a chaos filled moment, God brings order. How does this whole story begin? We're back in Genesis. Out of the chaos, God reached down in there created something, this earth that we live on. The spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Some translations would say upon the face of the chaos. It's just water. It's bubbling, stirring. The spirit is moving on the face of it. God reaches in there and he creates something out of the chaos. Our world is filled with chaos at the moment. Minnesota, Columbus, Texas. We pray that God can reach down into this chaos, into this moment, and bring something calm out of it. People would make good decisions. People would think about others above themselves. That is what it means to follow Christ. Forget about ourselves. To surrender, to sacrifice, to be sanctified. Let Christ have the way. Our closing hymn might say a little something about that. As we lift our hearts to the Lord one more time today in song. Since Jesus into my heart. Once you get to your feet as we sing one more time.
Your Lord would